What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be talking about which branch of the military you should join. Now this video, I'm not gonna cover every single topic because that would just be impossible. There's so many different variables that go into joining the military. I'm just gonna be covering a very select few subjects that can kind of help you guys narrow down what direction you should go with choosing what branch you should serve in. What each branch works with, the living conditions of each branch, the pride of service, the travel opportunities, educational opportunities, and combat opportunities. And also keep in mind, this is primarily focused towards the active duty side. This isn't covering guard or reserves. Some of the things will be similar, but this is heavily focused towards active duty. Now in the army, it is the largest of the active duty branches, covering about 472,000 people followed by the Navy, which has around 328,000 people. And then very closely right behind that is the Air Force, so 315,000. And then the Marines have 182,000. And the Coast Guard comes in last as the smallest active branch with 41,000 people. Now keep in mind that over time, these numbers slightly go up and down. So these aren't 100% accurate to exactly how many people are serving. I think it's also important to know how many job opportunities there are in each of these different branches. The Army has the most, by far, at 190, followed up by the Marines at 180 jobs. Now, the Marines is the second smallest branch but they have the second most enlisted job opportunities. Now the Navy has 80 enlisted job opportunities. The Air Force has 122 job opportunities, and then the Coast Guard has 23. So keep in mind that each branch has different ways of going about how they issue out those jobs. So I sat down real quick to just jot out what exactly does each branch do or what do they work on. So on this little diagram, I have the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. Now, if you really, really want to work on helicopters, right? Every single one of these branches has helicopters. If you want to work on planes, every single branch has planes. Now, if you want to work on fighter jets, or with fighter jets. The Air Force, Navy, and Marines are your only bet with that. The Army and the Coast Guard both do not have fighter jets. Now, if you wanna be on a ship, then your best bet is to go Navy or Coast Guard, obviously, but the Army actually has ships as well. They're transporters for vehicles, so I actually did not know this until I was researching this, that uh, you can actually do stuff with ships while in the army. And then if you wanna work with tanks, army and marines are gonna be your two go-to things for that. Now I know I could break down this even more to administrative jobs and medical jobs and all these different things, but most of the branches, if not all, are going to have general administration jobs. So if you just want a straight up desk job, you don't wanna work with any of those things specifically. All the branches are gonna offer some of those administrative positions as well. The whole purpose of this diagram is to help you eliminate which branches you definitely don't wanna go into. Because after this, I'm gonna break down all these other topics I talked about earlier, and you'll be able to calculate out what is the most important thing to you, and that will help you choose which branch or which branches you should definitely look into the most. So let's jump into some of these topics where we're gonna be comparing all five branches and how they measure up to each other in these different categories. So the first one I'm gonna be talking about is pride in service. I'm gonna definitely say the Marines. I think everybody can agree with us that the once a Marine, always a Marine is definitely the highest of pride in the military branches. No other branch comes close to having that pride even after they get out. Now behind them, I'm gonna say that the Navy is the second most prideful branch, and then the Army followed up by them. Now, it's not that the Coast Guard and the Air Force aren't prideful. I'm just awarding a first, second, and third place prize. Now, at the end, I'm going to actually have the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place ratings for these different categories. And that's what I'm going to use to show you guys how you can best choose which branch is for you. Now, let's talk about civilian job compatibility. I know this is a huge concern that a lot of people have when joining the military is, does this job actually transfer out of the military so I can do it afterwards. And I would say that the Air Force is gonna be your best option 
for jobs that transfer back into the civilian sector, followed up by the Coast Guard because they primarily do security of our borders. They do like law enforcement on the water. So a lot of their stuff is actually going to transfer directly back into the civilian sector as well. And then I would say the army behind them is also going to transfer fairly well other than the combat related jobs. Now living conditions is one of my most important things that I considered when I was joining the military. And the Air Force by far is leading the way with living conditions. I would say second that's followed up by the Coast Guard. Uh, let's just be honest, the Navy and the Marines, the living conditions, uh, the Marines by far is last, and then the Navy, if you get stuck on ships, I haven't heard nothing but bad things about the living conditions in those situations. Not that it's the most horrible thing in the world, it's just more of very, very small quarters. And that can be really hard for some people to live in such a small confined area with other people. So that's why the Army comes in third in this category, because... It just simply beats out the Navy and the Marines when it comes to living conditions. Keep in mind that this is all entirely based off of my own opinions and my own research. I'm just giving you guys a general guideline of how this stuff goes. Now let's talk about educational opportunities. A lot of people join the military because they're looking for finance support when they go to school. And a lot of people want to consider the educational benefits. Now, all of the branches are still going to offer the same educational benefits. It's a DOD-wide program. But the amount of time that you're going to have to actually be able to take courses, the amount of freedom you're going to have to be able to go to courses is going to be a lot different. I would say the Air Force definitely focuses the most on providing people the opportunity to get an education, go to school. It's also the only branch that has its own accredited community college. So you can actually get a degree in your job through the Air Force. The other branches don't offer this kind of opportunity. So they easily take number one. I would say number two is gonna be Army, uh, just because of the fact that you're gonna be able to possibly have more time and the living conditions, the ability to take classes. Coast Guard comes in third because, yes, you are going to be on ships sometimes or doing certain duties that might require you to be gone for a few weeks at a time out on the water with no internet. So the Marines and the Navy, again, come in last in this opportunity because it's going to be a lot harder to be stuck on a ship or be stuck in certain situations or be deployed all the time. And I would say that the Navy and the Marines are going to be two of the higher tempo deployment branches. So it's going to be a lot harder to maintain going to school while you're constantly going all over the place. You constantly don't have internet. Now let's talk about travel opportunities. Yes, all the branches are going to offer opportunity to travel, but which ones are most likely to travel and travel more often? And I would definitely say that the Navy is going to take first place with this one. I have heard from so many people in the Navy that they go all over the place they go to so many different countries they visited all these different places next i would say that the marines are followed behind them marines can travel with the navy quite often they are a part of the department of the navy so the navy technically owns the marine corps in a way so a lot of times the marines will travel with the navy to certain places and you also have the opportunity to get stationed overseas uh, unlike the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard did not score in this because you are limited to the United States. The Marines do all sorts of different types of trainings as well. So they go on all sorts of, we call them TDYs or temporary duties. But the Marines, I would definitely say travel more than the Army. Now these travel opportunities in the Marines and the Army specifically might include more deployments to hostile environments but you are looking at being able to travel and see more places. Yes, you still do have the opportunity to travel in the Air Force. Same with the Coast Guard. All the branches, you're going to have the opportunity to travel. I was just rating this on in six to ten years of serving. Who is going to be able to say that they've been to more countries? Lastly, I compared combat opportunities. Now, for some people, this might not be their cup of tea. They might want to be in the safest branch that they can be in. And then for other people, they might say, you know what? I, I want to serve. I want to be deployed. I want to be in these high danger situations. I would say that the Marines is going to be the number one option for you because you're looking at the first in, last out is usually how their motto can go. So I would follow that up by the Army, 
because they also deploy to a lot of hostile environments. And just like the Marines, they're on the ground, on foot. So you will definitely get your fair share of combat opportunities if you have a job in either of those branches that allows you to experience combat. Next, I would say the Navy, because with all the conflicts going on overseas, our Navy ships tend to be there and present when this stuff is going on. So not that you are going to be on ground fighting, but you might be in a ship that is protecting a certain thing or a certain area. And that is why I left out the Air Force and the Coast Guard, because the combat opportunities are going to be very, very minimal. There are not many jobs in the Air Force that actually put you in harm's way or where you're doing direct combat related activities. Same with the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard is primarily just for uh, doing the security of our borders and the law enforcement of the waters around the United States. All right, guys, I just broke down all of those different subjects and categories to help you understand how to select the right branch for you. So what I actually did on a sheet was create this exact same thing, but I scored everything from one to five, one being the best, five being the worst. So you guys can actually pull what categories you want, total them up and figure out what possibly will be the best opportunity for you when joining the military. Now, like we said in the very beginning, if you wanted to work on fighter jets, right, you can already go ahead and eliminate the Army and the Coast Guard. So that would leave you with the Navy, Air Force, and Marines. Basically, what you have to do is select which of these categories are the most important to you. But what I would suggest is you pick your top two or three things that mean the absolute most to you, the things that would be a deal breaker for you and tally that up and see how all the branches compete with each other. This isn't gonna be the highest score wins because the highest score means it is the worst. It means it had more fives or fours, which mean it was not first, second, or third. So what you're gonna be doing is calculating out the lowest score out of these categories. So I personally cared the most about travel, transferability to the civilian sector, and living conditions. If I didn't care about what type of equipment I would be working on, so I didn't eliminate any of the branches. Then let me go to the categories. So travel, living, and civilian transferability. As you can see on this, the Air Force's total comes out to six because they rank number one in living conditions and number one in transferability to civilian sector. They ranked fourth when it came to travel, but the overall score was a six. So based off of this, my other two options that would have been best for me would have been most likely the Army or the Coast Guard. Now again, this isn't to solidify, yes, I am doing this branch. This is more so just to give you guys a heads up of where you should be looking and researching into. If you answered all of this stuff honestly, and the answers are showing you that you should maybe look into the Navy or the Coast Guard, but you thought you wanted to be in the Army. Go ahead and just research a little bit. You still may find that there is a certain job in the Army that you just want. As you can see, this isn't to fully say what you should do. This is just to give you guys a general guideline of how to figure out where you should start researching from here. If you guys watch this video all the way through, I would love it if you guys commented in the comment section down below this emoji right here, letting me know that you watched the entire video. I really do appreciate it when you guys watch the entire video. Also, if you guys found this video helpful or you know any friends or family or whatever, it would be totally dope if you guys, if you wanted to share this video on your Facebook wall or on your Twitter feed with anybody else that you might think is interested in joining. It really helps the channel out when you guys spread the word of the videos I put out. So before you X out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace out.